and we're live. Hello. Hi, everyone. Here we're we back are again. Show number seven of eight. It's it's hard to believe that tonight is the last one of the tour. Very, very, very sad. I know it's really sad. We were talking before, but I think Trey's going to be the saddest. Yeah, I. You know what? I I think, you know, we we knew that everybody in. in Goose and you know was going to be so happy to be on this tour. You know, touring with Trey is huge for them. But yeah, it's it's really blown me away. Obviously, we know how much Trey loves playing music with anybody, and you know how much fun he would have was going to have. But I think it, it's exceeded my expectations how much fun he's visibly been having. You know, learning how to play with them, and you know now you know seeing seeing some pictures coming out yesterday of like you know him. It, lo it looked like he was showing Rick his way around, yeah. like the, the Mesa Boogie amp, like, you know. Yeah, that just, was so cute, like looking at the manual together. Like, yeah. This is really <laughs> adorable. This is just adorable. Yeah. It was adorable. <laughs> that was like the exact I word I was going to use. I, really I, I do love that picture um, just because I, I feel like it is representative of, of everything about this tour. Right. And yeah. in a lot of ways, this is Goose learning how to be a bigger band, which is their second go around of doing this, right? They did it with pigeons before, like right before the pandemic. And, and, you know, they learned how to be like kind of that mid-sized band where they were playing like a couple thousand people venues. And like, now they kind of are going along with Trey and learning how to be an even bigger band, which, I mean, it, it's impossible to say what's going to happen after this, but I would assume you're going to at least have like a couple of these arena size shows a year, if not in the Northeast and, Colorado but maybe even elsewhere mm -hmm. um yeah so it reminds yeah. me of when yeah it reminds me of when fish toured with Santana and they were kind of doing that too they were doing a lot of these like this is what it's like to be in an arena and this is what it looks like backstage you know like learning all of that stuff I think it's big for the management I think it's big for the crew you know I think there's a lot of people that are learning right now and it's it's really exciting and I think Trey really shines in this mentorship role I mean he's just super into it and I think this is one of those moments when he's really able to kind of be that elder statesman that I think he's really like earned that spot, you know? And I think that's so cool for him. And I think of how amazing it would have been if like Jerry was in that role for him. Um, yeah. And obviously Jerry wasn't able to do that, but I think, you know, for Trey, I think this is a really great like way to give back and it's invigorating and inspiring for him too, obviously. Mm -hmm. we, we can dream of what a, you know, like a, a 1993 JGB, the fish tour would have looked like <laughs> oh my god i would have been like crying every night <laughs> yeah oh man that that would have been right in my wheelhouse i would have been there right sure. me too for uh, sure yeah yeah. Definitely. Wow. yeah i mean would have been something i i in in kind of thinking about this i was going to go back and try to find some interviews of fish uh when they were doing that santana tour because those those santana tapes i got when i was very young even younger than ryan is now Wow. And uh, <laughs> and those were like the, one of the, the things that hooked me on fish. I think I got like a CD actually when they, you know, you could get like those kind of those bootleg CDs with like live recordings on them. And that one really pulled me in. I was like more of a dead fan at that point and then kind of became an even bigger fish fan. Um, and I just think about, you know, people just getting pulled into goose now with all of this tab stuff because they're just hearing all the stuff for the first time. And it's it's so exciting. So cool. And yeah. also sad that this is it. This is the last one mm -hmm. for now. I, I think Jeff had a pretty cryptic social media post today where he said, yeah. last tab boost show for now. Yeah. Uh, so, oh, so did we'll he? I means. didn't see that. Oh, wow. Yeah. He's been really, he's been liking this, the Twitter lately and giving all kinds he's of been, things. And Je Jesus. Jeff has been <laughs> absolutely a plus on Twitter lately. Just you yeah. know, in terms of just like, you know, posting things and responding to other people and, dunking on the haters repeatedly um it's been it's, it's been great um i i'm curious yeah. you know you know we've talked a lot about this tour people coming to their first goose show after being into fish and i'm curious you know how you react as a, as a fish fan who may have some sort of prejudice against goose if they open with slow ready you know the first thing you get is the auto tune <laughs> how do yeah. how does how does the jaded fish fan react <laughs> first of all if you're not into this song then you don't get life i mean this song is so sexy and so awesome and just seems slow ready so great right it's like it's so great and i i think
for me, opening with this is kind of like a badass move. To me, it says they're like really settled into you and they don't have to come out with like, I love the big banger opening and I think that they've been doing a great job with that. But I think this is a pretty cool like ease in to like their sound and what they do best. And it is something that Fish could never do. I mean, this is so different from what Fish does. Um, so I think, it's, I think it was an awesome move. Love this version. Love this song. I'm a, a huge Slow Ready fan. I, I recently, for for this tour, um, El Goose Times, which is a, a fan distributed magazine that they give out at shows, they did a, a collab issue with Surrender to the Flow. And thankfully, John Caruso asked me to write an article for it. And I wrote a little piece uh, called Hooked uh, that they, I think, have a recurring thing. And it's like the moment that really pulled you in with Goose. And uh, the funny thing is I... I did not write about some kind of like huge jam. I wrote about Slow Ready when they played at South Farms in Connecticut, which is not too far from where I grew up. And yeah, that that song is an awesome song and it has such a an amazing build in it. And I'm glad that they played it on this tour. It, it kind of seemed like they weren't going to play it. And uh, yeah, it just, the, the peak section of that tune really has a way of grabbing you. And I just absolutely love the song and, I love it as an opener. I don't think it's ever been done as an opener before. I don't think and so. I, I thought that was killer. Yeah, that was. Killer. It's open. It's open Absolutely second good. sets um, a, a, a number of times, but I don't think it's ever open to show. Right. I think it also is really indicative of what Goose does really well, which is like write really great songs that have awesome hooks and just choruses that just draw you in and like are almost I think a lot of their music to me is really hypnotic in a way that's like really infectious and I think that that this song is a perfect example of that mm -hmm. agreed and then and then you know we, Peter's been doing this um, a lot this year where he kind of takes out the ending of slow ready and will do something cool with the arpeggiator that usually leads into the next song whether it's something they jam on for a few minutes um, but this was cool he kind of you know, took a 30 seconds or so in the spotlight um, on his own, just kind of playing with the with the arpeggiator on there before Rick, you know, landed gently in the intro to Jive One. And, you know, this song always kills. Great first set tune, you know, great to follow up, you know, the obviously slow ready with just like a nice rocker, you know, Rick and Peter trading licks nicely on the intro. Just always a great song. Killer. Yeah, really great. Yeah. It's a fun, like, up-tempo, good move to open, mm -hmm. like, to go next. I think yeah. they're really, like, starting to nail these one set. You know, a one set show is hard, especially if you're a band that likes to play, like, a full two set show all the time. So I think they're doing a really good job. It's hard yeah. to construct these. And also, it, it ends our jive drought. We have not had either any of the three jive songs played on this tour up to this point. And I think even going back a few shows into uh, the October, like, a fall tour, the last Jive Lee before last night was 15 shows previously, which is an absolutely insane gap for that song. Um, I love this song. Yeah. I love Jive Lee. I, I don't know if I really knew it before I listened to the show from last night, and it's great. Like, I really love the jam that it gets into. Yeah, you know, the funny thing about Lee, and well, Jive One and Jive Lee, I, I kind of see those as like the emblematic Goose songs. Like, when I first started listening to Goose, those were the ones that I was like, how many of these do they have? <laughs> um, you know, jive and like three. drive kind of like sounds a little bit like it too. And uh, yeah. it took me a while, but um, they're, they're such fun songs and the, the lyrics are, are so cool. I thought for sure they were going to play a jive in Connecticut. Cause I think it has like a lot of deep meaning about growing up in Connecticut and things like that. Um, which is interesting. Cause I felt for those of you who don't know, jive one used to be called will Tony and jive. Was it actually they, named that at one point in time? Yes, I, and then and then when they you know, when that. Rick wrote Jive Two, they changed the name from Will Tony and Jive to Jive One. Oh, cool! Right on. Yeah, and the old recording recordings, he would end it and say Will Tony and Jive, um, but I thought it was just like a thing that he said. I didn't realize they actually had it titled that way. That's, yeah, that's fascinating. But you know, and then Jive Lee, which is, you know, if if you really like kind of jam bands playing funk then this is the song that I would use to introduce you to Goose. Oh my God, um, no wonder I like it. so well. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's, um, now I get it. You know, like, if you dig 97 Fish, you're going to love Jive Lee, I hope. Maybe that's not yeah, universally yeah. true, but I, I think you would. Yeah, I, 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 I wouldn't describe it as, as the, the funkiest song. Like maybe just, you know, great riff and, you know, there's clav in it a lot. But I think it's just, it's a great, it's a great jam. It, it starts off in a great place and it's a very 
you know, classic jam bandy sounding groove. So I, I, I agree with you on, on that. Um, and yeah, this one That's was like I was saying, eight jam nine bands minutes. playing funk, not like funk bands. So right, right. No, okay. <laughs> it's a whole different thing. Yeah. Like okay, cow yeah, yeah. It's a whole different thing. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, this was good. It was like eight or nine minutes last night, I think. And you know, it's it's always I, I I'll look at it and I'll be like, oh, it was only eight or nine minutes, but it's eight or nine minutes of just the jam. You know, there, there's no song part to get through before they get to the improv. So this has the same amount of jamming in it than like a 17 minute arrow does which is you know interesting to look at. So it, it but solid Jive Lee here for sure. for sure. And then yeah, and then and then we got Bob Don with uh Bob you know with. very very excited to see with pop up again, you know, only a, only a one Bob Don gap in between withs. So that's pretty exciting. Uh Wait, explain what you mean there cuz yes. I don't know. What so yeah, we, I was just about to of, jump into explaining here. Yes. Yeah. So okay. we we've, we've kind of du- dubbed it with which is that that like ending jam um over like the chorus progression where you know peter's on piano it's more gentle uh than the rest of the song they've only done it uh six times to date um and it is awesome and so it's kind of like the curtain with that that's that's why we started calling it with um but yeah it's similar type deal bob don also appeared on the undecided ep that was uh surprise released yesterday um under the name undecided which is the original name for the song when rick wrote it when he was like 14 oh and so they put it out labeled undecided yes but they they did still call it bob don on the nugs release of last night's show so we can continue to call it bob don That's well i have a couple of thoughts about that so like yeah. i want to explain bob don with a little bit more so bob don yes. does have a very natural ending when the lyrics end. the song usually ends then sometimes they will play this very kind of chill outro jam that will last like anywhere between three and five minutes. And it's a really cool little jam. And like, that's all it is. It's just, it's so simple. It's just like the song ends and sometimes it ends and you're sad because you really just want that little extra jam. And then sometimes <laughs> they add it on like they did last night. And I, I think the funny thing about Bob Don with is, I think we're the only people who talk about it. This is not like a greater goose community thing. Um, (laughs) We just talk about it a lot on the pod because Kevin, uh, who's on the pod really enjoys uh, Bob Don. Bob Don. So so there (laughs) you go. And then not with guy. With with. with I mean, like, yeah, if you like Bob Don, you got to like the with. But yeah. Yeah. And then the other thing about undecided is I wonder if was it originally named undecided because bob don is actually named after a person mm-hmm. so they can't really release a song that's named after a person so i think maybe that's the reason why they did that well it's oh. also on 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 the coach's notes um for the show when they debuted bob don uh in early 2020 um the coach's notes say that it was originally titled bob o john Bobo John, which it was on set list as Bobo John for a while. Yeah. Yeah. So, so, so that's my suspicion. So we'll do some digging, I think, and maybe we'll, we'll we, follow we, up. We do but... have from a, from a pretty reliable source that it was originally called Undecided, and that's why it's Undecided on the, the EP. But um, gotcha. yeah, I'm curious about the different names and, you know, why. Yeah, why. So why? Uh, Bob Don is named after the principal at Wilton High School. Um, <laughs> whose name I think is Robert Donaldson, right? Is it Robert Donaldson? Something like that. I, I but, don't know, uh, but I, I know it was about the principal. <laughs> yeah. How it's lucky is this guy to be like, you know, immortalized in a in a goose song? Yeah. It, it's funny because there's a lot of Wilton folks on the, the Goose Facebook group. And whenever this topic comes up, they talk about how much they dislike the guy. <laughs> so <laughs> it's kind of it's kind of an interesting thing. But... That's, That's really funny. Yeah. Well, after Bob Don, uh, we get Factory Fiction, which was completely caught, caught me off guard. You know, only a three show gap since the last one of Mohegan, the shortest gap in the song's history. Um, the other, the, the second shortest now being the 11 show gap in between Louisville and Philly earlier this year. But really, really surprised to hear this one pop up again so soon. Um, but, you know, above average jam on it, I think. Really, really good dissonant uh stuff i really like this song too it's really cool i mean i didn't know it until i heard them play it at mohegan and i really like it 
I think it's cool too that they're playing stuff that they like played with Trey, but then without Al. You know, yeah. I think it's cool that they're kind of like mixing that up so that you can kind of hear it, what it sounds like without Trey too. Yeah, I would love to hear why they played it again so soon. Yeah. Which is really interesting. I wonder if it has something to do with Coach just having the baby and, you know, maybe it's like some kind of nod to Coach. But yeah, it's surprising that they played it so soon. The, the funny thing about Factory Fiction is when you, when you think about it in, in the whole entire Goose catalog, it's not like, I don't know, it's not like the Grateful Dead busting out St. Stephen when they play it, you know, like it's, it, it's, but people really do get excited about it. And I, I, I just, I don't know, I guess I'm surprised by that. Yeah. Um, because it, in, in the grand scheme of things, I think, you know, Arcadia is a better song. So I, I don't understand why yeah, like I mean, folks get Arcadia so thrilled about song. it. song. But what, well, what is yeah. the average? Like, how often is it played? Really, I mean, so, sometimes things be like people like things just because they're more rare. Even if, yeah. you know, right. like it's, it's now been played um, twelve times in the band's history. Five of them being in twenty twenty two. So okay. it, it it used to be like it, it was a it was a much bigger deal bust out like you know when they when they busted it out at um, during Bingo Tour in twenty twenty. They hadn't played it in fr in front of an audience since June of 2018. So like, you know, two years, like 250 shows or something um, or more than that. But, you know, they played it at Coach's Wedding uh, in the fall of 2019. It's a song that he loves a lot. Um, and then, you know, it got three plays in 2021. Um, and it's kind of, you know, become like a, spe like a special occasion song. Like, you know, you can kind of be like, okay, like maybe they'll play it at this show. Um, you know, they played it, um, at the, the close, the second night at the mission ballroom last fall, which was like kind of a special occasion, like ending of their fall tour, you know, sold out two nights at the, you know, 5,000 capacity mission, which was a big deal for them. Um, you know, they played it in Louisville in February where like, that's right near, um, the, the Kentucky has always been like a big goose thing and like Covington specifically. And so that was pretty close and. So big deal for them. And then Philly in March um, when, you know, it was the end of this absolutely incredible winter tour. So it's interesting to see it pop up again so soon. And I, I, I would be very interested to know why. I mean, it maybe seems like, yeah, I mean, it sounds like one of those songs like Glide or Mound. Like for me, it's not like I love those songs, but they're special. And so when you hear them, you're like, people go crazy because it's like, you don't hear them that often, right? So, yeah. But yeah, maybe it's going right. to start entering more of a regular rotation. Yeah, I maybe complain. they were. I mean, it could be. We've been, we've been talking about that for a while now, which like all of a sudden it's like not so much of a rarity. There are some other songs that are far more rare now. Turkish so, Hills. Well, yeah, not that song. <laughs> um, but, <laughs> Turkish uh, Hills, Megan, you know, is, think... a, is a song that Peter wrote um, about an ex-girlfriend that was played a few times and not in a few years, and it's not going to get played. So no. <laughs> it's a, it's a running, it's a, it's a it's running a, joke. It's a running joke and it's a really bad song. I mean, it yeah. is not a good song. Oh, it's, it's not, yeah. I love goose okay. and I will fluff <laughs> everything that they do. I will never, never fluff that song. It's, it's not good. <laughs> it is amazing. not a good Big money bust out. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, right. Someday, you know, like in year 20, maybe they play it again and everybody has a laugh, but I don't think it's coming anytime soon. Yeah. Well, then we then we get Trey on stage uh, for the the Mata Vanastasio, Mata Vanastasio. Yeah. This um, is the first one that he's coined by right? coined by uh, Noah Ray uh, before this tour or during this tour, but it, you know it's been his Twitter name uh, for a while. Unfortunate uh, for Noah that they played it in between the two shows that he was seeing. Um, but it always happens you know, that way. Yeah. It's a great, it's a great name. Uh, it ended up as the title of, uh, my jam base recap today. So shout out to Noah for the great, uh, the great nickname for this and wow, what a jam. Yeah, this was awesome. This was like one of those things when I was listening to it, doing something else and then stopped and was like, okay, wait a minute. I really want to listen to this. <laughs> like what is happening right now? This is really good. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's a great jam. I mean, this is the one I've been waiting for. I've been saying this since probably second episode that we recorded. This is the one that's going to be an absolute heater. I don't, I, I mean, it met my expectations, I guess. I was maybe hoping for a little bit more like fireworks, but I mean, absolutely killer jam. I think it's, 
it was like that one goose song that I, I thought Trey could absolutely destroy. I look forward to maybe Trey having another opportunity to play the song. But, you know, the funny thing about this jam was like Trey was so excited to play it. I mean, before they even got into the lyrics, when they were in the intro, Trey's just like absolutely ripping it up. And yeah. then <laughs> then Rick starts to sing and then like he just like abruptly stops like, oh, <laughs> like, <sorry. laughs> like, oh, yeah, the lyrics. So yeah. <laughs> Can we just so jam good. right now? Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. Yeah, you know, I I think he sounded so natural on this. You know, taking the solo uh, right before the jam, like he just sounded amazing. And yeah, he and Rick obviously are so comfortable on stage and playing guitar with one another at this point. It, they just killed killed it throughout this jam. I I really love you know Goose does this frequently, but bringing Trey along for the ride when they kind of deconstruct the jam and then come around for a huge build right before the ending. Um, that was just, it was great to hear, but I, I really enjoyed all 20 minutes of this Madhavan. Yeah, it's been great. What do you think that Trey's played like the best with them? Like, what do you think has sounded the best? What song? In terms of song or jam? Mm -hmm. I guess either one. How about mm. both, Ryan? Give us both. Yeah. I, I mean, well, I've I mean, answers, but you go first. My favorite jam of the tour so far with Trey is still the All I Need from Portland. You know, the, the yeah. first thing that he played with Goose Still the best, in my opinion, um, has yet to be topped. I would love for them to top it tonight. That would be they very exciting. <laughs> um, but I don't, I don't know. It's, it's tough. I, I don't know if I could just based on a, on a song. I don't know if uh, I could pick. I mean, I really loved how he sounded on Factory Fiction and Mohegan. I thought that was amazing. Yeah. Yeah. How about you, Neil? So I agree with Ryan. Uh, the the best jam so far has been all I need in Maine. I mean that was just crazy. I was there, so I'm you know might suffer from attendance bias on that one. But me, me too. It was <laughs> yeah, when you were. no. Um, I, I think I heard it. I wasn't there, and I thought it was amazing. Yeah. Yeah. No. I mean they they were doing. I mean we talked about this maybe a couple episodes ago, but I, I, there's two aspects of what can happen in a tray sit in. You can just have like a guitar dog fight, or you can have just true improvisation. Because these guys are all really good at. It. I mean, Trey is is the master, right? He's the the you know the best living jam band guitarist around, uh, indisputably, right? Yeah. And the things yeah. he can do creatively are are just so vast, right? And so so yeah, like sure he can shred, and so can Rick, you know. But they can also really dive into jams, and I think that's what happened last night a little bit. And in Maine as well. So, like, if I'm thinking about my two favorites, it's probably Maine first and then last night second. And I think there was an element of this jam, this Madhavan jam, that was, it did have a little bit of that dogfight guitar stuff. And it was really, really good. And, but it also did have a little exploration on like Madhavan. And I think that is also awesome. So, yeah, I mean, it makes you wonder what they're going to do tonight. And then I guess one of my favorite things they've done on this tour wasn't even with Trey. It was with the, the horns. Yeah. The fish when they did insane. fish in the sea. Yeah. Um, yeah. I really, really enjoyed that. So like I put that up there with some of my favorite moments also at that show. So I might be kind of a little bit biased, but um, I'm totally biased about that, that like, show too. Yeah. So good. So much fun. Yeah. It was so good. Yeah. It's interesting because I think that I'm really curious about I wanting to hear them do more improv with with Trey because I'm definitely still trying to like understand what kind of jams Goose does. You know, I, you know, it's like when you listen to a lot of fish, you kind of have a lot of the structures and the formulas and the kind of I don't know, you know what to expect a little bit more, and so you can stay kind of in it more. And so with Goose, I'm still trying to figure that out. Like, so it's been cool to listen to them, and I know it's a little unfair because I've been listening so much to this this run and it's only what first sets you know and i think that that's mm -hmm. a little bit trickier when you're also then playing with guests and like it's not their true you know it's not going to be their true improv style at all but um yeah it's been really i feel like so many of those moments have been amazing i think the that emotional moment when trey does that like guitar riff in hunger site is kind of like yeah. maybe because <laughs> it's like when i saw them at radio city it was just like one of those musical moments i'll like never forget that i can still get like chills when i think about it and so even hearing him do that the other night i don't remember where it was but it was just that is just so incredible like that is just one of those moments that's like just such a it'll be seared into my mind forever you know it's just one of those like unforgettable like 
things to hear him riff that. It's incredible. Yeah. When I, you know, when I'm like 80 years old and somebody asked me about 2022, I won't just respond in words. I will just hum those four or five notes that the Trey plays. Yeah. Everybody hears it. I mean, it's like almost like a jingle. Like it just gets yeah. in your head and you just can't get it out. It's bananas. It's so good to hear him do that. It's like, yeah. oh, it's so good. I was like Make walking that my outside. Time. Yeah, exactly. But I was walking outside and listening to that the other day and I was like, it's just like bliss. It just fills your whole body with bliss, yeah. you know? Really good. Good stuff. Yeah. Well, yeah. And so a after Madhavan, they bring out Russ, uh, you know, to take over Jeb's uh, drum kit. I, I like how Jeff just came, you know, stood next to Trevor, had his mic, got a cowbell tambourine going. Um, but yeah, Animal, um, you know, very solid version. Love the contributions from Trey. Um, but I, I was a little bit disappointed that we weren't going to get a, you know, a, a 12 piece animal or, or a 13 piece animal. I know, you've been wanting to, that. You've been wanting show, that. But... That would have been great. Yeah. yeah. I'm sure they've got something else planned that's going to be pretty insane tonight. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm hoping that tonight, you know, I, I think we're getting ahead of ourselves a little bit speculating about tonight, but I'm hoping that tonight ends up being a little bit longer than the other shows. I'm sure they're not going to want to stop playing. Um, as much as we don't want them to stop playing. But I, I think it's going to be special either way, like every show has been. Yeah. yeah, I definitely agree. I mean, didn't Goose already put something out that said they're going to leave it all out there tonight? So I think they did. On, the, on their Instagram? Yeah. 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 Uh, it's always yeah. it's always a good thing. <laughs> mm -hmm. Now, yeah, and, and Jeff has alluded to that on on his Twitter as well. But mm -hmm. on the, the note of the, the, the 12 piece animal that you were talking about before, my hope is that tonight, that Trey Band does play a goose song. Like that's yeah. the one yeah. thing I want. I mean, they did a Billy song. Like, yeah. I mean, yeah. or they can just do like Rick and and Trey on acoustic guitars doing like. I mean, who knows? Like anything. It doesn't matter. I don't care what it is. But Jack um, or something. <laughs> yeah, I mean, well, Jack would be sick. I know. I, mean, I, I, I am. I am like the the president of the Rick singing Jerry songs fan club. Oh so, my god! I mean, Same. I mean, nothing is better. Yeah, Same, so good. They did that uh, at Radio ship of like ship of fools. Time. Okay, so here we go. So they they play the show, you know, nice and long sit-ins, whatever. They start out the encore with Otre below. I, I think it would be great. Rick, Peter, Jeff, and Trey on a, on, on acoustics. You know, like wow. That, I was that trying would be... to follow that. I was like, okay, oh Rick, but okay, got it. Yes, <laughs> yeah. Otre below. Um, Otre below. Otre below. But let, let's talk about this tab set from last night. Um, yeah, I was, let's do it. you know. A little bit blown away by it last night. Trey definitely seemed from the jump, you know, more more down to jam uh, with Tab last night. Things felt more adventurous, you know, a little bit longer. Like, you know, previously this tour, we haven't really seen things go over 10 minutes very much with Tab. Last night, there were a bunch uh, that were in the 10 to 12 range, but they're, they're packing a lot in there. Um, I want to give last night's MVP award to uh, Ray Pachkowski. Um because he's amazing. Some of the, some of the textures that he's doing and the way he plays off Trey when they get into a jam is phenomenal. Um, and also, um, shout out and all the love to Ciro. Um, you know, I hope he's okay. I hope he's back at the show tonight. Um, but Trey mentioned before the beginning of the set um, that he had a health um, emergency um, and had to miss the show last night. So there was, you know, there was a, a big dimension missing to Tab last night. You know, with his contributions, and you know, we didn't get. Uh, Trevor, Ben, and Jeff on percussion for the encore as well, I assume because of that. Um, but let's talk about the set, you know. Uh, a couple songs that we hadn't seen yet this tour. Never Needed You Like This Before opener. Great, Great call. opener. Always a good opener. Mm -hmm. Always a good opener. Yeah, didn't go very far, but I, I think that definitely the set in general, like you were saying, Ryan, more interested in jamming. I think that Trey maybe has been hearing some of the haters saying that they're like – bored with tab you know just playing like incredible music and want to hear some jams so uh they went for it yeah it's great <laughs> i mean this is just a solid set high energy the whole time um it's cool to see how he's fitting in these new you know the mercy songs and and the other and the lonely trip songs into his sets i think he's doing a really great job with that mm -hmm. yeah and then you know after never needed you like this before blaze on and wolfman's both getting that kind of slightly extended jam treatment you know great interplay between uh trey and ray on both of these getting into like a quieter groovy zone and you know as always the backbone of tab you've got the rhythm section of russ and desron um just killing it 
Mm. Yeah, I mean, you know, the funny thing is, and this is kind of like piggybacking on what Megan was saying, it's like, I, I think a lot of people are starting to say, like, I've had enough tab. Um, but like, I'm like starting to enjoy tab more and more the more I listen to them. Even yes, though there's Neil. like a lot yes. of repeats. There's like a ton <laughs> of repeats. And like, historically, I've never been a tab guy. I mean, I've been seeing fish for a very, very long time. And I've, I've always been reluctant to really get into tab. And but now after this tour and this show in particular, this one, and I, I think Mohegan um, stand apart from the rest of the tour as very, very, very good uh, sets. And yeah, I'm, I'm getting I'm getting more hooked as as we go. It's it's uh, I mean, last night was very, very good. Yeah, and I think Tab isn't the kind of band that you would go on like tab tour you wouldn't see like 10 tab shows you know in a row you know what I mean they're just not going to be as varied as like a fish or sounds like goose either so it's it's hard to compare that you know yeah. they have a smaller catalog they have they do a different thing so I think that like that is why people are are talking like this too but I'm glad to hear it I think they I agree I think this set and the set from Mohegan are the best and I also just think I mean I love tab I love to go see them and I think that they are really like stretching some of the stuff out the whole second like the last half of um, this set too is like fantastic. I mean, yeah. 46 days, it's like so good. Oh, first though, Blazing Down the Twisted Wire. What did you guys think about that? I, I like this song. Hadn't heard it um, before this tour. I think I think it's a good song. Um, you know, nothing crazy about it. I think um, I, I will take Hey Stranger and Roll Like a River uh, in terms of Mercy songs um, yeah. over this one, but can't complain. Yeah, I love I, Neil. You look like you have an opinion. No, I was just gonna say, like, I am super not familiar with the song. So, like, last night might have been the second time I heard it after I like listened to Mercy once and when it came out. Yeah, then, yeah. So, yeah, yeah. Well, and then and then Sand, which is you know always great. Um, mm -hmm. Shine, I love. Uh, great song. Highlights, you know, Tab and the the backing vocals, and they're always having fun when they play. It. Very upbeat. Shine sounds amazing with Tab. It's it's so beautiful. I was happy to hear it at Mohegan and really happy to hear it again last night. Mm -hmm. And then 46 Days. Um, yeah, you, as you mentioned, Megan, this absolutely ripped. Uh, another mm -hmm. one, just like, you know, the About to Runs uh, that we've seen this tour, you know, the horns left the stage, just left, you know, that that classic Tab sound uh, with drums, bass, keys, and Trey. Um, and, you know, just amazing. Th this is really when the, the interplay between Trey and Ray started to stick out to me. Just, you know, the way that, you know, not only that Trey plays off them, but that like Ray kind of sets up things for Trey to just, you know, shred. Like it, it, it was, it was amazing. I listened back to it this morning and just blown away. It feels a lot longer than 10 minutes. It really does. There's a lot of like nice effect pedals. It really gets out there and there's really, mm -hmm. really great peaks at the end. Definitely worth a listen. Yeah, I, I listened to this while I was walking the dog today again, and I listened to this twice uh, because I really enjoyed it. I was going to, you know, kind of just focus on the the taboo stuff after, uh, but this was just so good that it was just, yeah, it was worth a second listen. Mm -hmm. And then and then we kick off uh, the sit-ins, bring Rick and Peter out. Um, it was funny, he, he brought Peter out, and I think Rick was having an issue backstage or something like so he he didn't come on right at the same time as peter um and so i was like oh it's it just peter coming out and then and, the, and then rick uh came out which we mentioned briefly earlier but rick um had a new amp going last night um for those of you familiar with the classic uh early 90s tray mesa boogie into a wooden cabinet uh sound that's what uh rick was using last night which was really interesting you know, sounded more gritty than his tone normally does. Um, and so I'm, I'm curious if it was a one-time thing, if it's going to show up tomorrow, if it's still, you know, his amp come Goosemas in December. Um, but, you know, it, it definitely added a different dimension to his sound and a different, you know, as, as I mentioned, like a, a grittiness to it. It's really cool. I also love how Trey said that this tour has been magical before mm -hmm. they started playing together. Very cute. Yes. I think and, there might be some tears backstage tonight mm -hmm. after well, the show. Yeah. They would have had the mod of on tears last night, but yeah, <laughs> yes, they would have. It, something, something tells me that this is not the end, right? Like we talked, we talked about that mm -hmm. earlier. I think Jeff mm -hmm. left a pretty strong hint. I think Ryan, when you and I ran into like a couple of folks from the goose crew 
they were like saying like we could do this every year <laughs> like yeah, this is like, awesome. yeah i wonder if they're and, gonna do it um, like next year at this time that would be amazing i, I mean it'd be nice although i don't know like, i love running I know. I mean, I love fall fish tours. So like, I'd have to be a little sad if we didn't have a fall fish tour again, but maybe they would do, I really love the tab, like new year, like in like January, February, that's when like, I think they always do like great shows. Then that's when they mm -hmm. recorded that album, you know, the burn it down album, which is so great. And I think that like, that would be an awesome time of year. Cause like fish is never playing then like, that'd be great. I would love that. Yeah. I was just going to say that too. Like when, when this is happening, fish isn't playing. So like, I could see how some people would say like, I'd rather this doesn't happen because I want fish to play. I think uh, both can happen. Yeah, yeah. I, well. I mean, probably not at the same time. Or not not at the same time, but yeah, like, yeah, you, know, yeah, you can right. have a fish tour and a tab tour. Like, you know, last fall he had a, he had a you know, two week tab tour at the end of September mm -hmm. and then had a fish tour in October. Like, it can be done. And um, that fish tour was fire so like oh, yeah. maybe this is this is a good lead up to that yeah. big fall 2021 guy um yeah anyway so this mr completely from last night you know second one that they've done as a collaboration this tour absolutely amazing pick once again highlighted this to me was this duel that happened between trey and natalie uh during her solo that was amazing them trading licks um peter and ray having another cute you know double keyboardist moment uh in there but overall amazing yeah and and Rick and Trey all over it. Yeah. The Go one ahead, thing I'll, I'll say about <laughs> this one. Yeah. I wasn't sure you were going to say something. Or I was trying to get I you know stressed. you're being but, very um, respectful. Um, so the, there was quite a bit of Peter in this and I was really excited by that because I think this whole entire tour, it's kind of been the, the Rick and Trey show and mm -hmm. Peter's awesome. Like I, I love Peter's playing so much and there, yeah, he, he kind of stood out to me in this jam last night. So I really enjoyed that. And I also, and uh, like, yeah, so RJ was saying this yesterday that everybody on stage is so overly nice to each other that they're like trying to give each other space so that like sometimes like the jams just don't work out because they're just like trying not to step on each other's toes. And we've seen that with Ray and Peter, where Ray is encouraging Peter to play more. Like, mm -hmm. dude, like, come on, just let go. And I think last night, specifically in this gym, Peter was just like, I'm just going to go and I'm going to do my thing. And oh, rip. I really enjoyed that. Yeah. yeah. That's so great. Yeah. I This is not one of my favorite songs, but I think this, I think they've been just playing the hell out of it on this tour. I think it's been sounding really great. There's just something about it that just is weird to me, but. Interesting. Yeah, I, I like it. After this, um, we get the the plasma finally. You know, yes, been the pod delivers for this. once again. Thank you yes. uh, to our speculation. Um, obviously, you know that probably wasn't the reason they played it, but you know we we I can mean, we can say it was. Um, but really, I really love the way that they kind of ease into this song uh, with Tab. You know, with Fish, it's usually Trey starting up the riff, uh, but last mm -hmm. night it was just you know. Russ and Desron just kind of just like ooze into it um, as, and everyone else just kind of is doing stuff. I really love the way, you know, when, when Ray switches to that like distorted organ sound, um, if, if people don't notice, he's a bunch of, he has, I think two or three Fender amps in his rig, uh, one for the collab, one for the organ, and I think one for the, the Wurlitzer as well. Um, and so he, I, he's got a button where he can reroute the organ from being just straight, leslie regular organ sound to coming through the guitar amp as well which is what gives it that um you know distorted sound and i love when he uses that you know really great for this spacey jam yeah i loved this jam this is like one of my favorite gems that i feel like they've done in the collaboration so far like the descending chords and like even then yeah. like the background vocal singing that descending like that sounded so awesome i just i thought this was really like rich and effortless sounding in a way that a lot of the jams haven't sounded to me. So I really like this plasma jam. This is awesome. This, this might be one yeah. of my favorite <laughs> things they've done together. Yeah, and, um, I, I've been waiting for them to just kind of let loose and just do something weird. And this is, this was it. It's, you know, I, I think Rick did a really good job of just peppering notes in with what Trey was doing and the result was, was pretty awesome. It wasn't like the, the twin lead thing. This was just like two guys like making really awesome music. And yeah, I enjoyed this whole entire song. It was, it was pretty, 
pretty awesome. And I can't wait to listen to this one again. I think this is probably out of like all the tab collaborations. This is one that I'm going to probably listen to first before like the rest of them. Um, thought it was so cool. It was just unique. It was very different than all the things that they've done so far. In my I opinion. agree. I yeah. Agree. And, I, and I also feel like it gets like the two guitar dueling thing just to me gets a little like one note. So it's really cool. And like, yeah, I just want to hear them like go off and just like go down those dark alleys, you know? Awesome. Totally. This is like the, the stuff I've been waiting for. Yeah. 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 So I'm, I'm hoping we get that tonight, you know, longer, you know, and yeah, Trey's using his synth pedals, like, you know, Rick's doing cool atmospheric stuff. So it was, it was great. Um, and then, you know, Trey was not done. Uh, you know, I, I don't know if they were, they were planning on doing wave of hope in the encore maybe, but it seemed he was just kind of like, all right, we're doing another tune and it could have been planned, but it, it seemed like the kind of thing where Trey was just like, fuck it. We're doing another song. Um, and wave of hope was great. You know, more amazing guitar playing, just amazing energy. Yeah, I like this song as a closer. Mm -hmm. It's it's a really great closer because it's like ends has such a great like, you know, refrain that kind of like gets everybody like feeling those like awesome good vibes. I thought this was a great version too. I think the energy in the tab sets has been overlooked. Um, I think the energy has just been incredible. Yeah, I, I thought this was, was also really cool. This is one that I've noticed a lot of people have been talking about on you know in fish circles folks wanted to see the 20 minute version of this then i think it eventually did yeah. come along right it did yeah repeatedly yeah yeah yeah, yeah. It's a vehicle, so, were you sure. not at the hartford show i was at the hartford show there was a 24 uh, minute wave of hope at that show oh yeah that's right i was there uh how about yeah, that? neil how could you not remember <laughs> the top, top of your head um like uh I, I saw three shows this summer but i also saw a lot of goose this summer so it all kind of like I, I'm, I'm totally joking because I can't, but that's why we have Ryan. So it's fine. Yeah, that's that is why we have Ryan. <laughs> well, like especially with 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 fish, it's just like, you know, I still love seeing them and I love seeing them a ton, but I still see like a ton more goose. And then this summer, I saw like a bunch more music and like it's all a blur. Like it other seemed, bands, like, excuse yeah, you. I, like, saw a bunch of Eggy this year, which like what is I'm also what are, like in love bands? with Eggy. someday we'll have an Eggy podcast. Um, yeah, people are and, so into Eggy. It's so exciting. Uh, I like I wasn't, time. yeah, it, until I went to see them live and I was like, holy shit, these guys are really, really good. And so, yeah, so I've seen them. You can too, still but... see them in pretty small rooms too. Like it was funny when we were doing our HF pod lab events in Atlantic city. Um, my friend was like, we were at the venue early getting ready. And my friend was grabbing lunch for us, like at this restaurant nearby and bringing it back. And she's like, there's a really good band playing here at this like restaurant. I was like, well, really? And then she texted me like five minutes later. It's actually eggy. Like I, they're actually, they're really good. And they're just like here <laughs> playing at this restaurant. It was like so funny, but yeah. So it's kind of an exciting time. I think to see them. Nice. And they, they are, they're the ones that have Goose's old uh, touring van, right? Oh, is that true? I oh, no way. I think, I think it was Eggy. I think, I think it was Eggy that had it. It was, it was another one of, you know, people in the community. I think it may have been Eggy. That's so I mean, great. They're, they're definitely all friends. Yeah. I, I mean, I, I went to see Ben's... Ben. Ben has, Ben has uh, worn an Eggy shirt on stage many times. Yeah. So I went to go see um, Ben's band elephant proof play in um in black rock in connecticut and all the eggy guys were just there watching the show uh which was interesting and well of course like in all of the less special guys too there's the whole like scene there that like they're all you know they all been hanging out together for a really long time mm -hmm. well let let's let's get back on track here and all right, all right. Tangent, about last tangent night's show. over love a good tangent uh quantity yes finally very, very so happy to hear this last night. I love this song. It sounded great with Rick and Peter. Um, you know, I, I'm hoping we get the uh, Never Left Home tonight. Um, oh, you know, yeah. Nice extended version of that would be amazing. Both kind of similar vibes. Um, but yeah, Quantity is awesome. Yeah, pretty rare. Really cool tune. Super interesting. I love that they busted that out. So fun. So this is, I think we should talk about how the pod gets results because this, this is the second song from yeah. last night that yes, the pod gets results. The Thanks, second Ryan. song from last night that we, we talked about yesterday and they played, it's just so weird how that goes down. I mean, um, you know, Trey listens to the pod, you know, he yeah. Does. yeah. I mean, we were joking about that yesterday too. And I, I think Jonathan actually made a joke in the moment when we were talking about plasma, he was like, Oh yeah. Trey listens to the show. 
<laughs> and and then they go ahead and play it. And this is like the fourth or fifth or sixth time we've talked about something that we wanted to see. And then the very next day it shows up. You know, I'm sure I mean, it's all it's a almost coincidence. Like we've like listened to this band a lot and have an idea of what they might play. I don't know. Maybe. It's kind well, of there's that part. <laughs> there's that part as well. I listens. That's like the more likely version. Yeah, I, yeah, I think so right. too. I think so too. Uh, and then Money, Love and Change to close out the show. Um, I feel like it's a it's an atypical spot for this song, but I, mm-hmm. I really enjoyed it here. And I, I love this song. This is one of my first tab songs that I really loved when I saw them almost 10 years ago. Um, and yeah, just great song. Great way to close out the show. Yeah, I don't think I've ever heard this as a closer or an encore either, but really fun, super high energy, just like showing off what tap does best. That's pretty cool. And and that's 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 last night. You know, we got we got one more one more show left. Uh, you know, Megan, are you are you watching the webcast tonight or? Yeah, I'm not sure. I'll either watch tonight or I'll listen back tomorrow. It's, you know, TBD. Got to see where the day takes me. But um, yeah. I'm sad this is over. I'm excited to be on the pod tomorrow and talk to you guys. I'm sad that this collaboration is ending soon. But, you know, this has been so fun getting to it talk to you been. guys and, and getting to learn so much about Goose. I mean, I've listened to Goose every day, you know, through this whole run, and that's never happened before. So that's been really fun. Like, I feel like I've learned so much about Goose and um have so much more to learn, but, mm-hmm. but it's been awesome. Yeah. And yeah. And tomorrow we're going to have a great group uh, of hosts on. I think we're, there are going to be a lot of us. Uh, I don't want to jinx anything, but for any of you always almost there fans out there, for any of you always almost there fans out there, the elusive Kev is slated to be making an appearance on tomorrow's pod. Um, so sure get excited for that. Um, we are very excited because we miss potting with Kev and we love potting with Kev. Um, well, thank you everybody for wait, listening. Wait, I just want to connect oh, yes. one more thing before you wrap yes. up. Like I also want to express my gratitude for, for being on this podcast and this collaboration. Um, it's nice to work with some consummate professionals after working with Ryan for so long. Just kidding. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but no, yeah, this has so been like so amazing, the- so much fun. Um, and so grateful to, you know, HF pod to, you know, have us on as collaborators and so grateful to the the guys in the great beyond and actually got to see those guys a bunch early on in this tour. So this whole thing has been such a blast. It's uh, been amazing. You know, music aside, really just doing has. this whole thing has been so much fun. So, so thank you. Uh, yeah. It's been great. Yeah. Yes. Thank you guys. This has been so awesome. I'm so glad we got to do it and hopefully they'll do it again and we'll get to do this again. hundred percent. I, I would, I would love to do that. I think wh- whether there's another to boost tour or not, I think, you know, we will need to pod together again at some point because this is just yeah, too much fun. And I think if they have another to boost tour, we need to do a live event. All of us. Ooh, right. I, I, I think so. We we can like, you know, call it a business trip and exactly. charge it to an imaginary business that has yeah. you know all the yeah, storm all sound the all the show. Yes. Yeah, yeah. exactly. <laughs> Big mushroom money. With all that <laughs> mushroom money. Yeah, exactly. Awesome. All right. Well, we will be back here tomorrow, same time, uh, same place. Uh, come join us uh, as we talk about the final show of the tour, uh, which will be very bittersweet for us. Looking forward to tonight. Um, you know, Neil and I, and hopefully Megan, if you're webcasting tonight, we will be tweeting during the show as always. Uh, come hang out on Twitter, as I said yesterday. While you know, while it's still there, well, it's still um, still can. <laughs> <laughs> but yes, uh, everybody have a fantastic rest of your.